Welcome back everybody, my name's Nick930 and this is my full review for the narrative-driven PS4 exclusive Detroit Become Human. Detroit is not like most games. The gameplay is incredibly simplistic and focuses entirely on the story. And thankfully, Detroit's story is one of its great strengths. Detroit takes place about 20-some years in the future, where humans have developed incredibly lifelike androids that are used as workers, maids, or even sexual partners. However, something begins to cause an upset with the androids, and they begin to break protocol, causing them to become deviants. You'll play through the story of three different androids. Connor, an advanced android developed special by a lead android developer to hunt down deviants. Kara, a housemaid android that becomes deviant after dealing with domestic abuse. And Marcus, a butler android that is nearly destroyed because of a misunderstanding and finds himself leading a revolution to free androids. Each storyline is executed perfectly with likable characters, great performances, and interesting scenarios that will require you to make very difficult decisions. Much like past Quantic Dreams titles, Detroit is heavily based on player choice. A majority of actions you take throughout each scene can drastically affect the outcome of the scene or even the story as a whole. Situations range from choosing the right questions when interrogating someone, choosing the right path during the chase, or even deciding whether to risk your life to save someone else. In addition to some simple choices, you can even unlock more advanced choices if you carefully explore each scene. For example, in the opening scene, if you search around enough, you can discover the name of the Deviant taking a child hostage, which can help more easily defuse the situation and potentially save the girl's life. And I say potentially because you really can fail in a multitude of ways if you're not careful. Your choices have real weight to them. There's tons of branching paths with entirely different scenarios depending on what you do. I'd prefer not spoiling anything since this game is heavily based on the story and not knowing what's going to happen, so my examples are only going to focus on the original demo. You might find enough evidence and carefully talk the Deviant down, which results in both the girl and Connor escaping without a scratch, or you could end up jumping off the roof with the Deviant, only saving the girl. You can even end up getting shot in the head, resulting in everyone dying in the scene. All of your choices throughout the game will affect your friendships with characters and the overall public opinion of androids, something that will play into future choices and your potential ending. I found the story incredibly well written, with a ton of interesting questions and a lot of imagery that reflects sensitive subjects we're still facing today regarding race, sexual identity, domestic abuse, rape, and equal rights, and it does so in a respectful and clever way. The futuristic world is one of the most believable futures I've seen represented in a video game. The world looks very similar to ours, but with a few minor tweaks thanks to the explosion of Android-based technology. Android power stations are located on the curbs, there's a futuristic take on Uber cars, and the buildings look mostly the same as they would today. The world feels alive, with NPCs all doing various believable things, and most objects in the world can be interacted with. One problem I do have with the game are the controls. Now, I don't mind the fact that the game is heavily scripted and narrative-based, but I think they tried a bit too hard to make the controls feel involved and complex, when they simply don't need to be. Instead of just pressing a button when you approach an object, you need to move the joystick in a specific direction shown on screen. Some actions have you pressing and holding various buttons, some others have you shaking your controller around. And the camera is a total pain to work with. It feels like it's constantly fighting against user input, with some sort of built-in input lag. A lot of the game has you walking around small areas looking for clues, but your movement speed is set by the scene, and a lot of times you're stuck walking long distances without any option to lightly jog or run. Turning your character around also feels really awkward and sluggish, and it might look realistic on screen, but it just doesn't feel as smooth and responsive as I'd like. Then we have the choices. For the most part, the choices make sense, but occasionally you'll run into dialogue choices that aren't very clear, because they're summarized much like they are in Fallout 4. Sometimes you'll have the choice to select a sincere, calm, or direct line of dialogue, but it isn't very clear what that means, even in context with the scene, and sometimes the character will respond in a way I wasn't expecting, which can even result in a character distrusting you a little more. Action scenes are fast-paced and require you to make split-second decisions and complete various quick-time events. These are fine, but the button prompts are often shaking all over the screen, and the color choice for them makes them a bit difficult to see at times. And these are all issues that seem to persist with Quantic Dream games, and I feel like they simply don't care what people think when it comes to improving this control scheme. But I feel like the experience would feel better with simpler controls, as they don't really add to the experience the way they're set up now. Next we have Presentation. Detroit looks absolutely incredible. This is easily the best looking video game available today. Granted, it's an unfair comparison considering how heavily scripted the gameplay is, but still, there's some seriously good eye candy in this game. 
from incredibly lifelike character models, beautifully detailed environments, and some impressive rain effects. It's easy to forget that you're even playing a game. Even the motion capture for characters is convincing. I rarely ran into any form of glitches or bugs, but they do exist. I had a few instances of NPCs walking into walls, but they were incredibly rare. The game is locked at 30 FPS, but thanks to the gameplay being heavily based on cutscenes, this really isn't that big a deal and feels pretty smooth. There were some odd sound sync issues when viewing television screens in the world, but aside from that, sound design is excellent. The music composition is beautiful and really helps to set the mood for some incredibly impactful scenes, and also really helps to bring out the great presentation of this game. Overall, Detroit Become Human is a beautiful work of art. It has an incredible visual direction, great soundtrack, well-written story, excellent voiceover, and motion capture performances, and it is an addicting experience that feels like you're binge-watching a Netflix series. The gameplay could be improved with simpler button prompts, and the camera movement can be a pain at times, but it's worth it to experience this fully dynamic story. There's a lot of good replay value in this title thanks to the hundreds of branching paths and very different outcomes. But for $60, I probably can't recommend it to most gamers, as it doesn't really feature much else once you complete the story. You might be able to unlock a few extras like character models and development artwork, but there's nothing more than an engaging story here. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and if you want to see more content like this, make sure to like and subscribe for more content posted every week.